27 inches is just too constrained for you and you're ready to step up to a 30 inch plus monitor, but not quite ready to go to a 40 inch plus desk destroyer. So you're looking between a 34 inch alto end monitor and a 32 inch 4K. You've watched all the videos on what it's like to live with each of these two sizes of monitor. And now you need to know the performance difference you're gonna see between the alto wide and the 4K monitor. And boy, is there a big difference in pixel count between these two to the tune of 67.4% more pixels on the 4K monitor. Now, luckily, there's not a one-to-one -one ratio between for increase in resolution and decrease in performance, but how bad is the damage really? Well, I have tested 4K versus ultra-wide performance in 15 games across seven different GPUs so you can see the true performance difference. All these games were tested at their max settings with ray tracing on where available and FSR and DLSS off make sure that I'm not running into any CPU bottlenecks. So your real in-game performance is likely going to be higher than what you see here. Before we get into the game performance, I'm going to flash the specs of my test system on the screen now so you can pause the video if you want to take it all in. Now let's get into that game performance. Starting off, we'll look at Fortnite with epic settings and 100% resolution scale with Nanite and Lumen hardware RT on. Here is the ultra-wide performance, and now here we see the actual 4K performance, and this is what you would think the performance would be if you just looked at the calculated results. Here we see the 4090 is seeing less than half of the expected performance drop if scaling was linear. The rest of the cards are falling in between 75 and 50% of the expected performance drop. The 12 gigabytes of VRAM seem to be holding back the 4070 Ti, causing it to be virtually not an upgrade in performance over the 4070 in this particular replay making the performance gap to the 4080 large enough to compensate for the resolution difference between 4K and ultra-wide, but making a two-tier upgrade mandatory for the 4070 user. I wish Fortnite would just come out with a standardized benchmark because relying on replays which get scrapped every time there's an update is rough because when I tested this for my 1440p versus ultra-wide video there was more separation between these two cards in that replay. Enough complaining, on to the next one. Next up is Star Wars Jedi Survivor played on its epic preset with RT on and upscaling off. First we have the ultra-wide performance, this is the actual performance from going 4K, and this is the calculated drop in performance. Here we again see the 4090 outperforming the pack with only a 23% performance loss. The 7900 XT is the only other card that manages to improve upon the calculated results by over 25%, where the rest are getting only a modest improvement over the calculated results and the 2080 is actually seeing negative scaling, requiring even more than the calculated results to get back to the performance level of the ultra-wide, thanks to its VRAM being overwhelmed at the 4K resolution. Here we are seeing definite need for a 2 GPU tier upgrade to maintain similar performance. Next up is Starfield on ultra settings with no upscaling. First we have the ultra-wide performance, and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K, and this is a calculated drop in performance. This game is seeing good performance scaling with three of our GPUs seeing much less than 50% of the expected drop, while the other four also comport themselves quite well, meaning there is the need for only a one tier of GPU upgrade on the Nvidia side, though to match the 7900 XT's ultra-wide performance at 4K, you would need to jump all the way to the 4090. Next is Cyberpunk, using Ultra RT preset with upscaling turned off, despite being on by default. First we have the ultra-wide performance, and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K, and this is a calculated drop. Cyberpunk takes a heavy load on these cards, and only the 4090 manages to improve more than 25% on the expected results, while the four other cards stay just ahead of the calculated results, and two cards underperform the calculations. The 2080's VRAM is being hit hard, even at ultra-wide, causing unplayable performance, and at 4K it is non-functional. Both of the 12GB cards can get VRAM stuttering at 4K with longer play sessions, but the weaker 4070 suffers from it sooner, causing it to show up even in a short benchmark run. You will need to upgrade two GPU tiers if you want to have a chance at matching the ultra-wide performance. Next up is Forza Motorsport, played on its ultra settings with full RT and no upscaling. First we have the ultra wide performance, and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K, and this is the calculated drop in performance. Forza Motorsport is a game that is minimally affected by resolution changes, and as a result, all modern cards need only a small amount of extra performance for the 4K to match the ultra wide results. But at only 8GB of VRAM, the 2080 gets a handy warning 
that your VRAM is insufficient to play and therefore suffers at both resolutions causing poor scaling. This game may not even warrant an upgrade, but a one tier GPU upgrade will do the trick for sure. Next up is Diablo 4 played in its ultra preset with no upscaling. First we have the ultra wide performance. This is the actual performance when going 4K and this is a calculated drop. Three cards see less than a 50% the expected drop in Diablo 4, while the 700 XTX just misses out on joining them, thanks to being CPU bound but not quite as CPU bound as the 4090. The three remaining GPUs are barely staying ahead of the calculated results. Once again we see the need for one to two tier upgrade depending on where you sit in the stack. Next up is Liza P played on its ultra settings with no upscaling. First we have the ultra wide performance and this is the actual performance drop when going 4k and this is a calculated drop in performance. Three GPUs are seeing a decent improvements over the calculated results with the remaining four keeping their heads above water, making for a strong need for a two tier upgrade in several cases. Next up is Forspoken, played on its ultra high preset with upscaling turned off. First we have the ultra high performance and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K and this is a calculated drop. Our two 12GB cards are seeing less than a 50% of the expected drop despite seeing both resolutions riding the memory limit, though the biggest effect seems to be the loss of texture detail at 4K. Three cards are seeing decent scaling while two are just keeping above the calculated results. The 2080 is seeing heavily reduced performance at both resolutions thanks to its low memory. Next up is Payday 3 played on its ultra preset with no upscaling. First we have the ultra wide performance and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K and this is a calculated drop in performance. Payday 3 is the worst scaling game with only the 4090 getting a decent performance with three cards barely above the calculated results and three cards dipping below the calculated results. Here a two tier GPU upgrade will be needed for all cards. Next up is Forza Horizon 5 played on its extreme preset with extreme RT on. First we have the ultra wide performance and this is the actual performance when going 4K and this is a calculated drop. With ray tracing turned on in this game the 2080's performance is completely restricted by memory and we actually cause the 4K results to get higher refresh rates than the ultra wide results. Three other cards are seeing strong scaling performance, and the other three are getting respectable performances as well. Despite the good scaling performance, the tight grouping of the GPU's performance means you will still need a two tier upgrade to maintain performance. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, played on its highest preset with Ultra RT on. First, we have the ultra high performance. This is the actual performance drop in going 4K, and this is a calculated drop in performance. The 4090 manages to improve on the expected results by over 50%. The two AMD cards and the 2080 are staying in the green zone, and the remainder of the Nvidia cards just manages to stay above the calculated results. All upgrades will need to be a 2 GPU tier increase to maintain performance. The 2080 is suffering from low VRAM at both resolutions. Next up is Borderlands 3 played on its badass preset. First we have the ultra high performance and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K and this is a calculated drop. Three of our cards manage solid performances while the other three are managing just to beat the calculated results. While the 2080 performs fine in ultra wide, the VRAM gets mangled when going to 4K. As far as matching the ultra high performance, a one tier upgrade could have been gotten away with here, but you would still be sacrificing a small amount of performance. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla played on its ultra high preset. First we have the ultra high performance and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K and this is a calculated drop in performance. The top two Nvidia cards are besting the expected results by more than 50% and the rest of the modern cards are putting in solid performances. The 2080 is getting its VRAM crushed again at 4K resolution. Next up we have Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy played on its ultra preset with ultra RT turned on and no upscaling. First we have the ultra wide performance and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K and this is a calculated drop. Only the 4090 manages a solid improvement on the calculated results with the rest of the cards barely staying above them. And the 2080 once again is getting its VRAM blasted when it goes 4K. And last is Horizon Zero Dawn played on its ultimate quality preset with upscaling off. First we have the ultra wide performance and this is the actual performance drop in going 4K and this is a calculated drop in performance. 
Four of the GPUs managed to beat the calculator results by 50% with the AMD cards seeing barely any change thanks to their driver limited performance at the ultra wide resolution. The 4090 and 4070 are seeing a solid improvement. While the 4080 is still doing better than the calculator results, it's not by terribly much. Now let's look at the averages for each card and see what you can expect overall when comparing 4K gaming experience to an ultra-wide gaming experience. First we have the ultra-wide performance. This is the actual performance drop in going 4K, and this is a calculated drop in performance. As you can see, every card manages to beat the calculated drop, even the RTX 2080. All modern GPUs are in the green zone. The 4090 needing 26% additional performance to match the ultra-wide performance. The 4080 needing 41% more performance. The 4070 Ti needing 42% more. The 4070 needing 39% more. The 2080 is the only car to slip out of green range, but the practical experience is even worse than what is represented by this graph. The 7900 XTX needs just 32% more performance to match the ultra-wide results, and the 7900 XT needs 43% more performance to match. When you look at the GPUs that are not hitting any CPU limit at the ultra-wide resolution, like the 4090 and 7900XTX are, and are not having their VRAM overwhelmed regularly like the 8GB on the 2080 is, then you can see you need a roughly a 40-ish percent performance increase in order to maintain the ultra-wide performance at 4K. That means if you don't want to lose any performance in going from ultra-wide to 4K, you will need a two-tier GPU upgrade, except for when we're upgrading from the 4080 to the 4090. But with today's pricing, that's still a doubling in the cost of your GPU spend. Now, if you only go for a one-tier GPU upgrade, you'll be losing between 10 and 20% performance, depending on where you're starting from in the stack. That means if you want to achieve around the same performance level at 4K as you would on an ultra-wide, while spending around the same amount of money, your choices would be to either go for the absolute cheapest 4K 6 hertz monitor with a two-tier higher GPU, while you could otherwise have the best of the best OLED or QD OLED ultra-wide monitor with a two-tier lower GPU. Or you could have the QD OLED with 10 to 20% more performance versus a 4K high refresh rate monitor with no HDR with only a one tier higher GPU. Or you could save a whole bunch of money by just getting a high refresh rate mid-range ultra-wide monitor. The value proposition of going 4K for gaming is rough and you really need to factor in all the other non-gaming activities to make it worthwhile. Unless you're in a money is no object situation. But even then, you're still going to be getting 26% more performance on your Altwide than you would at 4K. Unless you can afford a better CPU than I have, then you'll be getting even more. Another thing to note is if you plan on upgrading to one of these resolutions without upgrading your GPU, is that if you only have 8GB of VRAM, the 4K resolution is going to destroy your frame rate in many modern titles due to VRAM overflow. And in some games, even liberal application of DLSS and FSR cannot save you. Even the ultra-wide resolution will be hit if you only have 8GB of VRAM in some games, though DLSS and FSR have more success saving it. If you have something like a 3080 10GB, then you'll likely be completely fine at 3440 by 1440 but the 4K resolution is still going to get you, as even the 12GB cards are still seeing some issues at 4K. Thank you for watching. If you want to see how these two resolutions stack up against standard 1440p and the super ultra wide resolution, you can watch these two videos here. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, check out my affiliate links in the description below and my Patreon. And thank you. I'll see you next time, ultra wide fans.